Good morning, everybody, and welcome to church. Are you glad to be in the house of the Lord this morning in the name of Jesus? My, 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 what a rain we've had overnight and this morning, but we are glad that you came through. Uh, I'm going to look out there for any boats that are tied up to the carport post. I don't know if there is or not, but we welcome you. How many of you are thankful today for the shelter of the Almighty? I'm so thankful for the shelter of the Almighty. In the book of Psalms, chapter 27, the Bible says, For in the day of trouble, he will keep me safe in his dwelling. He will hide me in the shelter of his sacred tent, and he will set me high upon a rock. In the book of Psalm 31, verse 19, Oh, how abundant is your goodness, which you have stored up for those who fear you, and work for those who take refuge in you in the sight of the children of mankind in the cover of your presence oh my think about that this morning in the cover of your presence you hide them from the plots of men and you store them in your shelter from the strife of tongues friends i am thankful for the shelter of the Almighty. I'm thankful for the sacred tent of the presence of the Lord this morning. Where would we be without the Lord? And I'm so thankful for his goodness today. We're so glad that you came this morning and uh, we welcome you in the presence of the Lord. And I know that you're ready to worship him and ready to praise him. How many of you are ready just to be distracted from all that's going on in our world right now and focus upon the Lord today in the name of Jesus. Could we do that this morning? Would you stand with us this morning? If you're going to do that with me, stand with us this morning and say, God, I want to be distracted from all that is going on. I want my focus to be upon you, and I want to lift you up in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, meet with us today as we come into the shelter of the Almighty God. God, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Let's stand and honor the presence of God today in Jesus' name. Bless you as we worship. Amen.
thank you, Jesus. You are always causing us to triumph and be in victory. The greater one lives inside of us. That's something to be excited about. Are you excited? Thank you, Jesus. Blessed it be your name in the land that is plentiful, where your streams of abundance flow. Blessed be your name. Blessed be your name.
the Lord uh, in prayer for needs today. I just want to read in James 5.16, it says, Therefore, confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. So my question is, are there any righteous people in here that have powerful and effective prayers? So uh, I want to go to the Lord in prayer. Uh, we want to remember everyone who's in the hospital or who can't be here today that uh, is maybe at home. Uh, I just want to lift those people up in prayer, but also not just the physical, but the spiritual and the attacks all across the nation, whether it be uh, the virus, what, whatever the case may be. I just want to lift, uh, not just uh, isolate it to physical sickness, but just prayer in general, spiritual uh, attacks against the nation. So uh, if there's any righteous people in here, uh, would you pray with me? God, I just lift up our nation, Lord. I lift up um, what's going on. I pray that uh, our leadership would have wisdom and how to deal with situations, God. I, I lift them up as they're going through these battles and these attacks and making hard decisions on, on what to do at a, at a local level, God, uh, with churches at, at a state level, uh, at the national level, our president, Lord. I pray that you would just give them wisdom. Uh, God, I pray that you would just bring physical healing to those that need it, Lord, in this room, uh, in this, in, in our city, members of our church, God, just, uh, just bring healing to them, God. Uh, bring peace and joy into their lives, God. For the spiritual, I know there's parents out there that have kids that, that they're praying for constantly, and there's kids that are praying for their parents uh, for spiritual needs. God, I pray that you would just bring healing in that regard, Lord. I pray that you would just lift them up, uh, that you would continue to bless them and be with them, Lord. Uh, we believe it, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. So uh, uh, normally this would be where we tell you to go shake hands, but if you just want to wave or say hi to somebody next to you, uh, uh, this will be our greeting time. So uh, if I could have the seniors, uh, Faith, Zeke, and Tucker make their way on up here. I meant seniors, uh, high, sc high school seniors, sorry. <laughs> this is a big day for me um, because I'm finally more dressed up than pastor one week. So I just want to take a moment to recognize myself. It's been, it's taken 27 years, but the day has finally come. So, uh, excited for that. First time for everything. <laughs> I know. <laughs> so these are our 2020 graduating high school seniors this year. Uh, yeah, give them a round of applause. Their, uh, their senior experience has definitely been different uh, than a lot of uh, past years. Uh, they've had to miss out on a lot. They've had to be uh, very uh, flexible with how they do their schoolwork and everything. So uh, I think they, uh, you know, deserve a deserve a big appreciation for just the work that they've done. So I'm just going to pass the mic down. They're going to introduce themselves uh, and kind of talk about what their plans for the future are. Do you want me to start down there? Okay. Well, I'm Tucker. Um, for me, I plan on, after this, you know, in the fall, starting going to Ivy Tech for either HVAC or something along those lines, because really through high school, I went to the tech school there, and that's what I did throughout that whole year, even though, you know, it ended pretty short in a rut, but still, it's something I'd like to do. I'm Zeke. Uh, in the fall, I will be enlisting in the military um, for a few years, and after that, be pursuing a career in law enforcement. <laughs> I'm Faith, and I plan on going to Ivy Tech to do social work. All right. All right. So this, this gets harder and harder for me each year because it, it makes me realize that I'm getting older. This is the first group that has been through the entire, since, since I've been at SLAM, seventh grade through graduating. So uh, this, this group's special to me. Um, I just want to uh, do what? Yeah, there's a few gray hairs in there. Some of them, some of them directly related to you. But uh, so in Matthew chapter seven, uh, 
Uh, this is a story that most people are familiar with. It says, everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And then the rain fell and the floods came, which is relevant to today. Um, and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like the foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. So uh, in today's society and culture, uh, there's uh, a big, uh, I don't know, debate or a shift from moving away from the truth of God's word. And what you'll find is that if you don't base your life on God's word, that uh, when troubles come, which they will during life, uh, whenever those things come, if you're not built on the foundation of God, that you have a chance that your life will just completely fall apart. But if you build your life on the truth, the one and only truth of God, uh, nothing can shake you, nothing can shake your faith, uh, and you'll be able to weather all those storms. So, uh, Pastor, if you... Thank you, Brother Bo. Praise God. Wise words. Really wise words. This is a time of faith. This is a time for faith. God has given you uh, an identity. It's what he has called you, who he has called you to be. He's given you a destiny, um, and that's what he's called you to do. And so this is a time of faith, a time of great faith in your life. I want you, if you just stretch your hands in faith this way as we pray. Father, we thank you today for these graduates. Lord, what a tumultuous year it has been in the last half of their senior year. But yet, Lord, they are here. Uh, Father, we celebrate their commencement, their graduation. Uh, Father, we celebrate them today and all of their achievement. And God, I come against, first of all, as a man of God, against every attack of the enemy upon their life. God, the enemy would want them to be confused about their identity, who God has called me to be. And I pray today, Lord, against every attack of the enemy. And I pray, God, that the identity, their God-given identity would come to fruition. Father, they may not fully understand it, but God, we know that you do. And I pray today that you would move upon their life and, Father, let them be, uh, be driven toward the destiny that you have for them, the career path. God, the future of a family and a home, God, let it be a home that is built and based upon the Word of God. And I pray today that your blessing would rest upon each and every one of them. God, we also celebrate their families who are here today. We celebrate parents and grandparents and other members of their family, God, who have been along with them on the journey. Father, we celebrate them today as well and thank them for all the input that they have had in these young men and young lady in their life. And I pray your blessings upon them today, God, in this time of trouble. May they find themselves placed secure in the shelter of the Almighty. And God will give you praise and thanks for it all. And we are excited to watch what you're going to do in their lives. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen and amen. God bless you guys. We thank God for you. Let's give them one more hand this morning. Would you do that? You can be seated. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. If you have your Bibles this morning, I want you to find our scripture today in the book of 1 Samuel, 1 Samuel chapter number 30, and I want us to look together in the Word of God. Now, beginning next week and following uh, along with our governor's directives and the phases of reopening, uh, next Sunday we plan on being ready to pass our offering baskets and be a little bit more uh, connected uh, with each other in the house of the Lord and the presence of God. How many of you are looking forward to just getting on in a safe and yet a progressive way? Are you looking forward to that? I'm looking forward to that in the name of the Lord. The book of 1 Samuel chapter number 30 this morning and uh, I also want to say that we have a basket right behind the sound booth on the table. Uh, as you entered into the sanctuary, we encourage you to drop your tithe and offering there as you leave the sanctuary today. And don't let the tithe and offering be 
on how good you thought the sermon was, all right? And uh, so we want to encourage you in that in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The book of 1 Samuel, as I said to the graduates, I want to say to all of you this morning, this is a time for faith. This is a time when we believe God. There are a lot of forces that are driving the issues that you and I are dealing with in life today. There are a lot of forces that are driving that. A lot of things that are speaking into our life, a lot of loud voices, a lot of loud volume, a lot of repetitive voices that are driving things in our life. But folks, you and I this morning have to remember who we are and we have to remember whose we are. We have to remember this morning that we are men and women of faith. How many of you would lift a hand and say, Pastor, I am a man or a woman of faith? How many of you would believe that in your life? We all are this morning. And so many things are happening in 2020. Who would have believed that here we are looking at the month of July and we would have faced so many things in the first half of this year? Who would have ever believed that we would ever go through things like what we are going through? A man by the name of Edmund Burke nailed it when he said this, and I quote his words, The only thing necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. It's for good men to do nothing. I said it's for good men to do nothing. To sit on their hands and just sit and watch while the world goes by and the world continues in the pathway that it's going in. God help us to be men and women of God God help us to be people of faith that are going to stand in the middle of the flow of what is happening in the world around us and say, as for me and my house, we are going to serve the Lord. How many of you want to be a leader just like that this morning? I want to talk to you this morning for a few moments. If you believe I can do it in a few moments, say a good amen. Now, my watch may run a little bit different in the area of moments than yours this morning. But in the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30, this is one of, my, one of my personal favorite stories in all of the Word of God. David and his army, David and his mighty men had been out fighting battles for weeks, for months, for a long season, and they were tired. They were weary. They were ready to come home. And the Bible says that as they were nearing their home city of Ziglag, The Bible says that they literally experienced what we would call this morning a major setback. They had endured a lot. David and his army were tired. They were weary from all of the battles, and they were looking forward to going home and laying in their own bed and eating supper at their own table and getting back home for some rest. They didn't have any clue what was waiting for them when they got home. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 30 and beginning verse number 1, the Bible says, Now it happened that when David and his men came to Ziglag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south and Ziglag, attacked Ziglag, and they burned it to the ground. Does this relate to anything going on in our world today? And had taken captive the women. And those who were there from small to great, they did not kill anyone, but they carried them away and they went their way. In verse number 3, the Bible says, So David and his men came to the city, and there it was, burned with fire, and their wives, their sons, and their daughters had been taken captive. Father, may you add your anointing to the reading of your precious word, and I pray that you would speak to every one of us today a word from heaven, and we pray this in the mighty name above all names, the name of Jesus, and everybody said amen. I find it interesting that in one version it begins in this story, and it begins with this word, now it happened. Now it happened. As we turn the calendar year into 2020, we had dreams and aspirations of this year, believing that it was going to be a great year, that finally our miracle was going to happen, that this thing, this victory, and that wonder was going to happen. And maybe now we can look back and say, I cannot believe what all has happened in my life. But here in Ziglag and in the life of David and his army, something very unexpected happened in their life. Their city was smoldering in rubble. The Amalekites, their enemy, had carried away their wives and their sons and their daughters. They had just lost everything. And here at this juncture, here at this juncture, we're about ready to find what kind of leader David was. 
Here at this point in time, as their city was burned, their wives were taken, their sons, their daughters, their grandchildren, everybody was gone, and their city was burning in rubble. Right now, we're about ready to find what kind of leader David was. You know what I believe about leadership this morning is leadership is not manifested during the victorious and easy times. It's not when everything's gravy and everything's hot fudge Sunday, but it's when the going really gets tough and it's when everybody is discouraged and everybody wants to give up that it is there that you'll really find out who is a leader. Leader leads, leaders lead when nobody wants to lead. Leadership is not a position so much, but it is a response to a challenge. I want to focus this morning out of this story, and I want you to keep your Bibles open because we're going to look at several verses of Scripture throughout the chapter. But I want to ask you this morning, what do you do when you hit an unexpected reversal? I want to ask you this this morning, what do you do when you get that call in the middle of the night? I want to ask you, what do you do when you get laid off? What do you do when you come out of the doctor's office and you are diagnosed with something that you totally did not expect it? The Bible says here in verse number one, now it happened. And if I can be real with you this morning, all of us have had one of those moments where we could say, now it happened in my life. We could all talk about the unexpected challenges But can I tell you, folks, those unexpected challenges this morning do not have to destroy us. But there is a way that we can respond that empowers us in the power of the Holy Spirit this morning. And David gives us an example of that in 1 Samuel chapter number 30. The Bible says in verse number 4, look at it with me. The Bible says, then David and all the people who were with him, they lifted up their voices and they wept. I'm not just talking about crying at the notebook movie. How many of you can relate to what I'm talking about this morning? I'm talking about one of those mascara running kind of sob times when you just weep right now and your mascara is just ruined and you've got to go back to the beginning and start all over. How many of you ladies know what I'm talking about in there this morning? But David and all of his mighty men, they wept. Now listen, folks, we're going to find what kind of a leader David is. And you and I this morning, we're going to be challenged in our life. We're going to say, God, when those happenings happen in my life, what is going to be my response? Well, the Bible says, first of all, that David and the people were with him. They lifted up their voices and wept. And the Bible goes on to describe it that they wept until they had no more power to weep. David expressed grief with all of the others. He didn't put himself above because what happened to them was the same thing that happened to David. He didn't put himself above everybody else's trouble because he was experiencing the very same thing. He didn't didn't consider himself above everything else. He was willing to be vulnerable. People love David for that. He is strong, but he is strong in the Lord. And the Bible says that David and all of his men, they wept. Listen, folks, these guys were not... How can I say it in a way that we all understand it? Let me just go on and read my notes. These were men of war. These were seasoned soldiers. But when they came home and they saw their city burned and their families taken captive, I mean, church, their response was heaviness and sorrow and grief. Some of you have been through so much in this season of your life, and you are saying with all that is in you, God, how can I make it through what I am going through? Church, hear me this morning. Church should be a place where we can rejoice together, but I also think that church ought to be a place where we can cry together. I want you to get the picture here this morning that David and all of his mighty men gathering in the city square, amen, and we are going to our courthouse down here at 4th and Main Street, and all the men of the city gathering around that courthouse square and gathering as a group and weeping and praying. We're saying, God, we need a revival, and I want to say to you this morning, where are the men? that are going to weep in the presence of God and say, God, if you don't show up, Lord, I don't know if I'm going to make it out of this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Church ought to be a place that we rejoice, but it ought to be a place where we can weep. Harvest time, the church is not a house of performance. It's a house of relationship. 
Look at your neighbor down each side of your pew this morning, and I want you to look to them and say, I love you in Jesus' name. Would you do that this morning? I love you in Jesus' name. This is not a place of performance. This is a place of relationship. David wept, and it did not make him any less of a man because he wept. It didn't make him any less of a leader because he wept. The Bible goes on to say in verse number 5, look at it with me, and David's two wives and Abigail, the widow of Nabal, the Carmelite, had now been taken captive, and David was greatly distressed. Why? Because all the men that he had just led in a time of weeping, all the men that he had just wept with this morning, where now the Bible says in verse 6, because of all the people were grieved, every man for his sons and daughters, they spoke of stoning him. I mean picking up stones and throwing at him and hit him in the head, hit him in the face, hit him in the torso, in every area of his life. But what did David do when everybody was against him? Now, I'm sure that none of you in this room understand what I'm preaching about because everybody in your life loves you and everybody in your life has never said anything ill towards you. But let me just say to you as a pastor this morning, I get some people that are on the other side of what I believe sometimes and they don't really know how to respond to me. Is there anybody that knows what I'm talking about this morning? David strengthened himself in God. Now, what does it mean to strengthen yourself in God? There's a big difference between being strong in the Lord and strong in yourself. There's a big difference this morning between confidence in the Lord and being self-confident. One happens in our spirit. The other happens in our flesh. Paul said, with might through his spirit in the inner man. David led, even when people were talking about stoning him David led them in prayer, he led them in worship, and he led them talking to himself. Can I tell you, folks, a little bit about what I see going on in our nation? The church is under attack. I'm not just talking about harvest time. I'm talking about the body of Christ. I'm talking about every Bible-believing church in town. I'm talking about every Bible-believing church in the nation. They are under attack, folks. They are allowing groups of people to congregate in large areas, but when it comes to church and worship the Lord, I understand the concern, but can I tell you this morning, we have to remember who we are and whose we are and how many of you believe today that God can take care of his own this morning? He can today, church. Listen. David was reminding himself when he strengthened himself in God, he was reminding himself of the promises of God. He was reminding himself of the faithfulness of God. Now, I want you to think about David. We're finding out what kind of a leader he was. David didn't have anybody there to do it for him. His men were talking about stoning him. Listen, it's nice to be around some people that stand with you when the going gets rough this morning. But look at the contrast in David's response, amen, versus the response of his men. Instead of drawing strength from the Lord, what did his men do? They were picking up stones and saying, we should have been here to defend our family. And you had us out fighting your war when we should have been here protecting our own. Church, when we take on a victim mentality and we start blaming all of our troubles on somebody else, we are on the wrong track. Can I tell you that every one of you underneath the sound of my voice this morning will stand before the King of Kings someday and you will give an accounting for your own life. Now is the time to make sure that we are right with God. Can the church say amen? David strengthened himself in the Lord as men. Amen. Did not. When Israel... What did Israel do when they were out of water in the wilderness? The Bible records that they blamed Moses and they even blamed God. God has brought us out here to die in the wilderness. But David encouraged himself. David strengthened himself in the Lord. Friend, when trouble has come around you and you feel surrounded by the enemy this morning, can I tell you that you're not really alone? Can I tell you that God is with you this morning? Somebody say, God is with me today. Would you do that? God is with me this morning. Look at verse number 7. 
Now David said to the priest, Ahimelech's son, bring the ephod here to me. And Abiathar brought the ephod to David, and David inquired of the Lord, saying, Shall I pursue these enemies? Shall I pursue these enemies? Shall I overtake them? He's praying to God. A lot of times we want to ask all of our Facebook friends. I'll just preach the rest of it right here. Amen this morning. A lot of us want to ask all of our Facebook friends, what do you think? I want to ask you this morning, have you inquired of the Lord this morning? I want to ask you this morning, have you asked God about what you need to be doing in a time of adversity, in a time when something has happened in your life that was unexpected, that was sudden? Have you come before the presence of God and say, God, I want to know what you think I should do? David inquired of the Lord. He didn't go off half cocked this morning. I don't know if I would have had that kind of discipline in that situation this morning, but it was the right thing for David to do. Listen, when a crisis happens in your life, take time to collect your thoughts. Remind yourself of how faithful God has been I wonder if there's anybody here this morning that God's been faithful to you in your life. Would you lift up a hand and say, Pastor, I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the Lord on my side. Come on this morning. Now praise him with that, with that hand lifted up. Give the Lord a praise this morning. Give the Lord a praise this morning. Father, we thank you and we love you in the name of the Lord. You know, folks, sometimes you've just got to remind yourself of the faithfulness of God. Sometimes when everything is raining and everything is storming, Everything is trouble here, there, and everywhere. Sometimes you've just got to remind yourself, wait a minute. I remember some other troubles that I've had in my life, and I am here today because God was with me right back then. And if God is the same yesterday, today, oh, you're not with me this morning, but I'm going to go on and preach. God was with me, and if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, then I'm going to believe that God is going to bring me through whatever I am going through today. Oh, pastor, that sounds good, but I don't believe it then my friend you've got a faith problem ask God to do what is next ask God for his wisdom have you been in a dark place ask God David said I've never been in a situation like I am right now God said David was saying to himself I've never faced anything like I am facing right now now and so what did David do? He strengthened himself in the Lord and he went into the presence of the Lord and he began to talk to God about it. Why is it, friend, that God's the last one that we talk to? I'm preaching this morning better than your shout. In verse number 9, the Bible says, And so David went, he and 600 men who were with him, and he came to the brook Besor, where those stayed who were left behind. Where those stayed who were left behind. Friends, I am convinced that if the Lord said to David, don't go, I am convinced that David would not have went. He would not have gone. I want you to remember the story. Remember the children of Israel when they first arrived in the promised land? The 10 spies came back and brought back a report and they said, friends, countrymen, lend me your ears. He didn't really say that, but something along that line. He said, it is a good land, but there's some mighty big giants there. I don't think we can do this. Well, the Bible says that there were two that got up after the ten were done, Joshua and Caleb. How many of you are thankful for Joshua and Caleb? And the Bible says that they encouraged him and said, listen, I believe, yes, there are giants there, but look at the fruit of the land. Look at the well watered of the land. And they said, listen, I believe that we are well able to go in and take the land right now. Listen, they decided to do the opposite of what the Lord told them to do. That's what they did. They understood nothing about obedience. David this morning could have done like the children of Israel, but God said, go, and David went in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. How many of you are willing to go in the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ? Verse number 10, the Bible says, and David pursued. Some of you are already getting ahead of me. Stay with me this morning. Verse number 10 says, and David pursued. Everybody say pursued. He and 400. Wait a minute, Pastor. I thought there were 600 men that went with him. Don't get ahead of me. 
That's my sermon. And David pursued this morning, and he and 400 men for 200 stayed behind who were so weary, amen, that they could not cross the brook. Here they are on their way with only 600 men. They probably were going to face a much larger force when they caught up with the enemy this morning. They needed all the help that they could do. But what happened? 200 or one-third of his men decided, David, we just can't go on. We're just too weary. It was going to be hard enough with 600. Now they've only got 400. How many of you have ever been in a situation in your life where you said, Lord, you've asked me to do something, and God, I stepped up and said yes, and the very minute that I sat my feet underneath the desk, all of a sudden 200 people turned in their letter of resignation. How many of you have ever been in a situation like that? Come on this morning, church. Amen today. Amen. It was going to be hard enough with 600. Now he's only got 400. What do you do? Do you the rest of you sit down and give up? No. The Lord said to David, I will give you victory. Oh, I want to have a dance and praise time right now. I want to have a praise break in this house right now. Why? Because David was saying, listen, the Lord promised that he was going to give me victory, so I'm going to continue on with the 400. How many of you know this morning that we're two or three are gathered together in the name of the Lord, that the Lord is right there in the midst of them. Friend, you don't need to have a prayer meeting of 30. All you need to have is a prayer meeting of two or three. And if you've got nobody, you've got Jesus, that's one more. You've got the Holy Spirit, one more. You've got the Father, one more. So even if you look around and you're all by yourself, can I tell you, you're in a company of three others this morning that have all the power and all the might. Somebody lift up their hands and say, God, God is going to do this in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, church. Hear me this morning. Have you ever noticed that sometimes one setback is followed by another? We turn the calendar year and coronavirus hits our planet, hits our nation, people that are affected. I'm so grateful that and I want to testify that to my knowledge in Posey County, we've not recorded one coronavirus death in all of Posey County. I'm very thankful for that. I give God glory for that. I know there are others this morning, amen, I know there are others who have been sick, and I understand we're praying for them, we're praying for our health officials. How many of you know we support those that are out there on the front lines for us, right? But have you ever noticed a time in your life when one setback is followed after another? What I like is David didn't get angry at the 200 that sat. Wow. Well, you, 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 honorary cowards. No, you don't read that in the scripture. David didn't get angry with the 200 that sat. He just kept trying to do what God told him to do. Oh, I want to preach in here this morning. Some of you are saying, well, if I could just get somebody coming alongside of me and help me in my ministry, let me ask you, did they call you into the ministry or did God call you into the ministry? Somebody said, well, if I could just get somebody else, if I could get a few more people, uh, amen, then, then I believe that this ministry and that, that thing that God has called me to do will be fruitful and it will be advancing. Let me ask you this morning, what if they don't come alongside of you in your vision? Will you go on and worship God and work for the Lord? I know that I'm going to. How about you this morning? Verse number 11, let's move on this morning. And they found on the journey, listen, they're following a mass army. And on the journey, they found a certain Egyptian in a field, and they brought that man to David. They gave him bread, and he ate. They gave him drinks of water. And they gave him a piece of cake of figs and two clusters of raisins. All of these things which I like, glory to God. So when they had eaten, his strength came back to him, for he had eaten no bread or drank water for three days and three nights. And David said to him, to whom do you belong, or, and where are you from? And he said, I am a young man from Egypt, a servant of an Amalekite. Wait a minute, those are the same guys that we're chasing. And my master left me behind because three days ago I fell sick. 
Isn't that just like the enemy this morning? You get wounded and he leaves you and goes on to somebody else. But can I tell you what God does? God comes to you in your brokenness and into your time of need. When you say, God, I'm not going to make it through this battle. God says, yes, you are because my strength is going to be perfected in your weakness. My strength is going to come up in your life this morning and you will come out on the other side. Hallelujah. And verse 14 says, and we made an invasion of the southern area in the territory which belongs to Judah of the southern area of Caleb, which we burned Ziglag with fire. And David said to him, can you take me down to these people, this troop, this, this, this Amalekite army? And he said, swear to me by God that you will neither kill me or deliver me into their hands and I will take you down to them. And when he had brought him down, there they were spread out all over the land. They were eating, drinking, dancing because of the great spoil which they had taken from the land of the Philistines and from the hand of Judah. The Amalekites thought this Egyptian was as good as dead. If the disease didn't kill him outright, he would die of thirst in the desert how many of you know this morning that God is able to outwit our enemy? Woo! I want to praise him this morning. They thought he was a good as dead. Listen, if you know your history about D-Day, if the weather would have been different on D-Day, the whole outcome of the war might have been different this morning. If you know your history you know there were godly people that were praying for the ally army all over America they were praying, all over the world that they were praying. Oh, pastor, I just think it was the wisdom of generals. Who gave them that wisdom? Can I tell you, it was God Almighty this morning. If the weather had been different on D-Day, the whole scope of the world might look different than what it does right now. But God directed General Eisenhower to invade at just the right time time. Can I tell you that God has the right time for your miracle, the right time for your answer, and God will bring together what you need at the very moment you need it most. Somebody say hallelujah to the Lamb of God. You look at Paul before he became a Christian. Paul was a man that persecuted the church. He traveled from town to town, city to city, and when he found a church, of believers, he would persecute them. He would bring them before authorities and saying, these guys are preaching in the name of Jesus, the one whom we've crucified, the one whom you put to death. But shortly after his conversion, when he met Jesus on the road to Damascus, Paul was in Damascus convincing Jews in the synagogue of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I mean, a man that was the enemy of the church. And can I tell you, the church has got a whole lot of enemies right now. I'm preaching better than you're shouting today. You better be praying for the church. You better be praying for the body of Christ. You better be praying for the church's leaders all around the world. They are under attack. Oh, maybe not here in the tri-state area as much, but in places around the world, they are under attack, friend. The Jewish leaders decided to kill Paul. Do you know how Paul escaped? The Bible says during the night, some Christians came to his aid, let him down outside the wall city, the wall of the city in a basket. Not the most glorious way to leave a city, but it worked. Can I tell you that God always has the answer for every need in your life this morning? He is the answer. Can the church say hallelujah? Let me move on. Verse 17, the Bible says, And David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. Now, I don't know if I've ever noticed that, how long this battle went on. The Bible says that David attacked them from twilight until the evening of the next day. That's a long battle, friend. Not a man of them escaped except 400 young men who rode on camels and fled. I want you to notice something right here this morning. When we're discovering what kind of a leader David was, that David attacked the enemy. David attacked the enemy. 
People don't mind you preaching about sin until you preach about their sin. It wasn't an easy battle. They fought all night and all day until that next evening. Sometimes we think and we believe that if God is for us, every battle is going to be easy. But can I tell you, according to the word of God, God could have struck the enemy down and killed them all before David got there and all of his families would have been there with open arms welcoming them to take them home. And But David and his men had to fight. They were doing exactly what God had told them to do. I find that there are two extremes within the body of Christ. Stay with me this morning. I'm about ready to close. Two extremes within the body of Christ. Number one, some don't want to even think about spiritual warfare. They don't want to deal with demons. They don't want to deal with any kind of spiritual warfare. And then there are other groups that see everything as spiritual warfare, that there's a demon under every bush. I would say, guess who your worst enemy is? It is you. Might be my last sermon, honey. I don't know. Your worst enemy is you and your flesh, friend. Your flesh wants your your flesh is your worst enemy this morning. Your flesh wants to rise up and give attitudes and this, that, and the other. That enemy has to be crucified. Yes, there is spiritual warfare, but the most of the battle, the most of what we have to do is denying our own flesh. You and I have to understand there is a battle to be fought. Too many are defeated in their own sense of apathy. But David attacked the enemy and kept on fighting until the enemy was defeated. Sometimes people People will pray, and that enemy, it's like he folds his arm and shakes his head no, and we say, well, I guess it isn't to me, being, um, uh, isn't meant to be. Well, what about praying again? What about getting a group of people to pray with you? What about bringing them before the church? What about putting it out there and saying, God, we believe that you are able to do all things, and this morning we're going to pray until the enemy is moved in the name of Jesus Christ. Come on, folks. David found favor. He found, he attacked the enemy. Next this morning, verse number 18. I tell you, church, I came to preach this morning. David recovered what the enemy had stolen. In verse 18, the Bible says, so David recovered all. Somebody say recovered all. Pastor, that's good for David. What what about me? If the same God who worked in David's life is still God, he will work for you. Touch your neighbor and say, God will work for you. Would you do that? Hallelujah. Team, would you come as I get ready to close this morning? I didn't say I was closing. I just said, get ready. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. Verse 18 of 1 Samuel 30, and David recovered all. Somebody say again, recovered all that the Amalekites had carried away. David rescued his two wives, and nothing of theirs was lacking. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Some of us say, Lord, if I can just get a little bit back of what I've lost, friend, get the whole thing. Nothing of theirs was lacking, either small or great, sons or daughters, spoil or anything which they had taken from them. David recovered all. Oh, I want to shout. Woo. Mm. Oh, Pastor, I remember when I had this, that, and the other, and I don't have it all, but it'll be all right. Why? What's wrong with going after all of it? What's wrong with going after all of it? prophet in the Old Testament said, and God will restore to you the years, the canker worm, the palmer worm, the locust hath eaten, the caterpillar. God said all of those seasons that have eaten and gnawed at you and been a burr under your saddle that has attacked you in different areas of your life, the prophet said that God will restore the years. Some of us say, Pastor, if I could just get back to where I was last week. God wants you to get back to a place where you've recovered all, church. Woo! What has the devil stolen from you that needs to be recovered? 
Are there family members in bondage today? Are there financial breakthroughs that need to happen? David's warfare, and I want you to catch this this morning. David's warfare didn't just benefit him. When God gives you a victory this morning, it's not just for you. Thank God for an amen and pastor's wife. Hallelujah to the Lamb of the Lord. I'm going to take her to lunch and, and take her home with me today in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Woo! David's warfare, friend, didn't just benefit him, but it blessed his family. It blessed his friends. It inspired others. Oh, I'm getting ready to go to work now. Hallelujah to the Lamb of the Lord. I want to encourage you to contend for victory for all of your family. I want to encourage you to contend for victory. Pastor, what does it mean to contend? You ever been on a wrestling team? That guy wants to pin you to the mat. I grew up in a wrestling team. I had two older brothers. <laughs> when I came along, they thought it was fun. And I said, Lord, Dad, give me a, give me a younger brother. I had to go through a girl before I could. And I couldn't, I couldn't do that to my sister. Amen. But David's warfare, I want to encourage you to contend for victory, friend. Every one of you in, my, in this house this morning, I want, you to con I want to encourage you to contend for victory this morning. God knows how to get prodigal sons home. God knows how to deliver people from drugs and other addictions this morning. Lastly today, verse number 20. The Bible says, and David took all the flocks and herds that they had driven, they had driven before those other livestock and said, this is David's spoil. All the people said, David, you've helped us get everything. We want to reward you. We want to give you something special. All of that, this is David's spoil, they said. Now David came to the 200 men who had been so weary they could not follow David into battle, whom they had also made to stay at the brook. So they went out to David and to meet the people who were with him. And when David came near to the people, he didn't say, ha, 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 look what we've got. He greeted them. And all the wicked and worthless men of those who went with David answered and said, because you all didn't go with us, must have been from Kentucky, because you all didn't go with us, we will not give you any of the spoil that we have recovered except for every man's wife and children that he may lead them away and depart. But David said, whoa, whoa, my brethren, you shall not do so with what the Lord has given unto us who has preserved us. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody this morning. Don't be selfish with the good things that God has given to you in your life. Who has preserved us and delivered us into the hand, the troop that came against us. For who will heed you in this manner? But as his part who goes down to the battle, so shall his part be who stays by the supplies. They will share alike. So it was from that day forward that he made it a statute and an ordinance for Israel to this day. Now when David came to Ziglag, he sent some of the spoils even to the elders of Judah, to his friends, saying, Here is a present for you from the spoil of the enemies of the Lord. My God, my God, my God. David set back. Whoa, it happened. David set back. Whoa, I didn't expect that. David said back, I'm so tired and weary from all these battles. I just want to go home and sleep in my bed and eat a meal at my own table. Whoa! Burn into rubble. On fire. David's setback was transformed into an awesome comeback. Here's what I want to leave you with this thought this morning. God never consults your past to determine your future. I want to say to you this morning, God never consults your past to determine your future. 
church. People might say, oh, I know who you are. I knew your family. I knew your grandparents. I, they were honorary people, and I just know you're going to grow up to be like them. No, not so. That might have been my grandparents, but can I tell you, one day on my road to Damascus, I met Jesus, and Jesus came to where I was, and he put his arms all around me, and he said, you are mine, you are mine, you are mine, you are mine in the name of Jesus. Let me ask you, saints of God, what you're going to do with the setback? What you going to do with the setback? What you going to do with the setback? You didn't expect it, but it happened. It happened. People are saying now, Pastor, I wonder what else is going to come in 2020. You know what I'm believing for? I'm believing for a revival from heaven. I'm believing yes, God amen. for God to send something down from heaven. I'm believing God for an outpouring of the Holy Spirit of the Lord. Because you see, my source is not in Washington, D.C. My source is not in Indianapolis, Indiana. It's not in Springfield, Illinois. My source is in the God of heaven. I'm a part of a kingdom, and I serve a king this morning. He is king of kings, and he is Lord of lords this morning. And can I tell you, everything is going to be all right. If you believe that, would you stand with me this morning? Everything's going to be all right, friend. God is going to make a way where there seems to be no way. Jeannie, would you sing this morning in the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. The table that you prepare for me. Oh, come on, saints. Let's praise him this morning. In the presence of my enemy. It's your body. And the blood you shed for me, this is how I fight my battle. I wonder if you'd just bow your heads with me all over this place this morning. I think some people here preaching like this, and they think, are you fully aware of what's going on? My, my, my. I am fully aware, friend. And I would return the question to you this morning. Are you fully aware of how good God is? That God is more than able this morning to take care of every situation in your life. People say, Pastor, when all this is over, I'll get back to praising him like I used to praise him. Oh, my friend, you've got the cart before the horse. You've got the cart before the horse. Pastor, I tell you, when all this is done and everything's back to normal, I want to ask you this question, friend. What if it's going to be trouble after trouble after trouble and Jesus comes in the eastern sky and calls his church home? I'm not saying that is, but what if? Are we going to give God praise and believe that God's the same God yesterday, today, and forever? Or are we going to doubt what he has promised in his word? With every head bowed and every eye closed this morning, before we dismiss and we all go about our day, I want to ask you the most important question that you're going to be asked today. And that is this, friend, where do you stand with God? Where do you stand with God? God promises that we'll get back everything the enemy has stolen. But I want to ask you this, where do you stand with the Lord? With every head bowed and every eye closed, I want to talk to you about the grace of God that he is offering you. I want to talk to you about the mercy of God that God is offering you today. 
that no matter what your past is, maybe you haven't fought some of the same battles. Maybe you haven't fought some of the same trials and wrestled and contended the way others have. But I want to say this to you, that my friend, that God loves you anyhow. And he died so that you could be free. So with every head bowed and every eye closed, are you here this morning, friend, and you need Jesus? Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Are you here this morning and away from the Lord? Are you here this morning and maybe you walked with God at one time, but things have changed and circumstances have changed in your life? I want to ask you this question. Are you where you need to be with Jesus? Are you where you need to be with Jesus? Someday we're going to stand before the Lord and we're going to give an account for whether we've served the Lord or not. My friend, are you where you need to be with Jesus? With every head bowed and every eye closed, I wonder if there might be any in this room this morning that would lift a hand and say, Brother Mark, would you pray for me? I'm not where I need to be with Jesus. If that's you, would you slip up your hand right now and just put it back down? Just slip it up and put it back down. Is there anyone at all? All right. Thank you. I see that hand. God bless you today. Anybody else? Pastor, I'm not where I need to be with Jesus. And this morning, I want to give my life to the Lord. I want a fresh start. I want a fresh start. All right. Would you pray this prayer with me all over this building this morning? Just say, Lord Jesus. I come to you in faith. I come to you in faith. I believe that you died and was buried for me. And also you rose again. I open up my heart to you. And I invite you to come in. Become my Lord and Savior. I confess you now. In Jesus' name. Oh, hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Father, I give you praise for this one that responded today. And I believe that with all my heart, Father, that their life has been turned around, that their name has been written down in the Lamb's book of life. And Lord, should you return today, Father, you'll take them home to be with you in heaven. God, I thank you. There's rejoicing in the presence of the Lord today over what happened today in Jesus' name. Now, I want to say to all of the rest of us this morning, have you had a setback? Have you had a setback in your life? Are you allowing all of the things that are happening in our world right now to set you back in the area of your faith? Have you had a setback this morning? Is the enemy trying to bring up your past Is the enemy trying to remind you of the person that you used to be this morning? You need to put the devil underneath your feet, friend, and say, in the name of Jesus, I am a child of God. I am a king's kid. I am more than a conqueror. I serve the Lord Most High this morning, and he is the one that is able to take care of me no matter what I go through in the name of Jesus. Pray with me right now. Father, for all of the rest of us this morning that have had a setback. God, all the rest of us in this room this morning that have had a setback. Father, we've had one of those things that happened. Maybe that call in the middle of the night. Oh, God. Oh, God. Father, we've had a situation happen in our home, our family. Lord, we've had a setback. God, a report that's come, we've had a setback. Lord, help your church to get her eyes off the setback and focus upon the King of kings and the Lord of lords. God, I know what I'm preaching isn't easy. I know what I'm preaching. God, David was about to be stoned. He was all by himself. He was the only one that went in and strengthened himself in God. And Lord, you gave him a plan and he came out of your presence with a plan and he gave it to the rest of the men. And God, they pursued the enemy and they recovered all. I pray for all who are here today, Father, that even in these times that are not easy, God, help them to focus their gaze upon you, hope to focus their faith upon you, to focus their all upon you today. 
For God, you will make a way where there seems to be no way in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And all of God's people said, Amen and Amen and Amen. Thank you, Father. Could we, before we leave, just look to heaven and say, Lord, I know you're going to bring me through it all in the name of Jesus. I know that you're going to bring me through it, God, all the way on the other side. I'm going to come out on the other side in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Father, you said when we even walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil because God is with us. And we give you praise in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you for coming today. Thank you for receiving this word. Let it be food in your spirit. We love you, friend. God bless you today. In the name of the Lord, be blessed. Amen. Your mom.